Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to this presentation. I'm Subha Thomas. I'm the developer of the microcontroller kit. My objective with this talk is to give you an overview of the microcontroller kit and to go over some examples showing you how you can use this functionality in your own projects. So what does the microcontroller kit do? It automates the generation and deployment of code to microcontrollers. So why, so why is this relevant or why is this useful? Well, for, for some time we've had uh, functionality to do control systems and signal processing, and now even system modeler is part of the Wolfram language. So these features are confined to simulation. Typically you want to take your controller or your filter or, or the model for hardware in the loop simulation and deploy it to the real world. And that's where the microcontroller kit comes in. So once you have your controller or filter, you can automatically generate the code. You don't have to manually write the, uh, the microcontroller code. And typically when you're doing this, as you go from the real world to the abstract model and you're doing the design, um, that involves some assumptions and approximations. When you come back to the real world, you have to reckon with these assumptions and uh, approximations. And you, you, typically you won't get the design right the first time and you'll have to tweak certain parameters. Now, if you're manually doing that, that process is susceptible, uh, susceptible to errors and it can get quite cumbersome and it'll go, it's going to distract from the main design you're do, doing. So the microcontroller kit helps you to avoid all these problems. So the typical application areas for the microcontroller kit are in for controller design, filter design, hardware in the loop simulations and data acquisition. So how, do, how does the microcontroller work? For that, let me go to the, the product page. So, so, the, so this area has just one function and it's microcontroller embed code. And to microcontroller embed code, you give three arguments. The first one is the controller or what you want controller filter or basically the systems model that you want to deploy to the microcontroller. The second argument is what is the uh, microcontroller, which inputs, which outputs and how you want to configure them. And the third one is the port to which the microcontroller is connected or what program are you using to upload the code to the microcontroller. So I like to think of this as what you want the microcontroller to compute which microcontroller, which inputs, and so on, and where to find the microcontroller. So once we give this input, microcontroller embed code returns this microcontroller code data object from which you, uh, from which you can get additional properties and the source code and so on. We'll, we'll, we'll see that when I go over the examples. And it returns these two, two LEDs. The first LED, if it's green, it means it's successfully generated the source code. And the second one, if it's green, it means it has compiled and successfully deployed it to the target. So what is going on between microcontroller embed code and microcontroller code data is the following. So when you evaluate microcontroller embed code, it's taking this Wolfram language code and converting it into, into a low level C or, or Arduino type sketch, depend on how you specify it. And from there, it compile, cross compiles it and through the and using the programmer, it uploads it to the microcontroller using the external programmer. So if you just have Mathematica installed on your, on your system, it's all it's going to do is generate the source code and you can see the source code and it's going to stop there. You probably get this one to be a red LED. But if you have a compiler tool chain, typically if you, if you in, uh, install Arduino IDE, it'll automatically locate that if it's in the usual place and and then compile, and then if you have the microcontroller, it will it will go through the go through this process and upload it. If it cannot, if you don't have a physical device, it'll again say red and say I, I did I did not see anything on that port. If if you have your compiler in a different location and and so on, you have to specify it. But if it's in the usual place, it, this whole thing just works automatically. Okay, so let's go back here and. And see, so, so what are some of the features before I, I go into the example? So the basic thing is digital output, whether you want to turn a pin high or low. 
if you turn a pin high, you can and you connect an LED to it, it's going to turn on and off. That's that's the that's the basic of uh, uh, functionality of a microcontroller to set something high or some, set, set something low. A little more involved than that is pulse generation because in in digital output in the whole sampling interval the pin is either high or low. But in pulse generation you can adjust whether how much time it's high and how much time it's low and you can control that. Yes. So you get an output as as a pulse instead of a constant output. So, so this is digital in uh, digital output. It's conversely, you have digital input. The basic thing is you can read whether something is high or low. A little more involved one is pulse counts. If you have a a, a set of pulses coming in, because typically the output may not be always the output may not be a constant high or low. If you have pulses coming in, if you can count how many pulses are coming in, that could give you like in. Uh, important information like if it's it's the encoder attached to a motor shaft if the pulses are coming fast you can tell how fast the motor is uh, going and and so on so that's digital output digital input and then there is analog output uh, that's the pwm signal you can adjust the brightness of an led or control a motor uh, dc motor and there's analog input distance sensors potentiometer reading and then there are various communications serial SPI and I squared C. So these are the basic features of that that are supported, and these are very general. So you can use them in any uh, device that supports I squared C, or whenever you want to send an analog output, and so on. Okay. So let's let me start by looking at a at a basic example. So over here, okay. I have a Atmega 168 uh, microcontroller. So this is the smaller version of the one that is typically on the Arduino Uno. I've just, ta just taken that and it's just bare metal there. And all the, so this one here is a, is a voltage regulator. So what this, this circuitry here does is just make sure that the microcontroller gets a constant clean five volt uh, supply. And I'm not going to use the potentiometer for this. And to, into this pin, so the notch is here. So this is how you count the pins. It goes. This is a, uh, These are there are 28 pins, 14 on this side and 14 on that side. And on pin 15, I've connected an LED. And let, let's see how we will write Wolfram language code to blink this LED. Okay, so. So the first thing I'm going to do is write what what I want to do, so that is I want to blink the LED. So I'm going to create, uh, okay. So now the first argument is I'm going to call the pin value P. The pin value, if P is zero, that if it's low, I want to set it high. Otherwise, I want to set it low, okay. And the output is also P. P is my state. System has no inputs and I'm going to have a sampling period of half. Now you can see from output response how this will what I do. Oh, you know what? I think I need to have a vacuous input there just for the sake of output response. You see, this, this little block here generates a pulse output. So this is what I have now, the first argument that goes should go into microcontroller embed code. This is what I want the internal computation of the microcontroller to be. So next I'm going to do the microcontroller specification itself. Okay, I'm going to the target. Like uh, it's a dual inline package with 28 pins. I need to put 28 there. And it's going to have just outputs. The output is on pin 15 and it's a digital output. 
Okay, now, okay, I have to load the microcontroller kit before I go any further. Okay, then I can do microcontroller embed code. I can put blink there. Oops. Okay, that's the microcontroller specification. And now, now I need to say how I can program this. So these are the programming, how the programming pins are connected. And this is a USB ASP programmer. Let me bring it up so you can see how I connect it to my Mac. So this is the other end of the of the programmer that I that I put into the USB port on my Mac. So now I have plugged it in. So I'm going to say Okay, hopefully now this should work. Oh, I could not connect to this. Okay, just... okay. So, so now, because I've, I've set the sampling period to be half, it's going to be turning on for half a second and then turn off for half a second. I can say increase that to two. Okay. So now it's going to turn on for two seconds and then turn off for for two seconds. I can now disconnect this programming pin. And now I have a completely standalone microcontroller that that is running code that I, I started off with Wolfram language code. And using the microcontroller kit, I have now embedded this this code onto onto the target and it is completely stand, uh, standalone. So this is the gist of what the microcontroller kit does. You, you take, you, you design something in, in, in the Wolfram language, and then from this high level specification, you deploy something standalone. Okay, so let me go over the, the examples here. So, so I'll, 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 I'll see how much we can go here. So all the features I've listed here, these are the basic building blocks like digital output, uh, the kinds of digital output, digital input, analog output, analog input, and the way I have laid out these these examples is in this in this grid. The first eight examples show you all these basic features. Each one of them highlights one one or two of those features, and this is uh, then this row here is the scope. It tells you what what it supports, how you can get more information, and so on. And the last row is a row of application examples. So this is the one I, I just uh, did, but over here I used another microcontroller. So, so if I, so if I want to like switch, if I, if I had this microcontroller, all I would do is change the target name, change the pin name and change the port name. And then I would I would just change that and evaluate again, and then I could get the same thing running on on another microcontroller. So this is again another advantage of the microcontroller kit. You you do some design, and then you want to move to another microcontroller, or you want to change it a bit. You want to change the 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 pins that you use. So you can just make those changes right there in the Wolfram language, and it will take care of the rest for you. So the next example. Yeah, this next one, slightly more involved. So the previous one that I showed, it just had uh, digital uh, output. So here I have digital output as well as digital input. So I'm, what I'm doing is I have two digital inputs. One is a button input and the other one is an encoder input. Okay, the encoder will tell me how much my shaft has turned. And I'm displaying that onto a seven uh, segment uh, display. So each one of these segments is an LED. So in the previous case, I had one LED. Over here, I have uh, seven of them. So let, let me start from the input side. So you, see, so you see this button. So by default, it's this leg which is connected to, yeah, this leg which is connected to three. This is zero, one, two, three. Pin three is always low. This is just a pull down resistor. It's always low. When I press this button, 
that pin is going to go high and that is the a digital input to this microcontroller and then the other digital input comes from the encoder so and as i mentioned before that is a series of pulses so i can count the number of pulses by counting so if i want to see number of pulses here i can just count the number of rising edges when it goes from low to high that will tell me that now no, I see one, two, three, there are three. And then I can also count the number of pulses by counting the number of uh, falling edges. Or I can count whenever it, it's, toggled, it's toggled and then divided. But there are, there are several ways to compute it. And, and, and when the encoder is sending input, it's not going to be sending like a constant stream of pulses. Those pulses are, are going to be closely or, or uh, widely spaced depending on how fast or slow I'm turning the encoder. So that is another input. So, okay, so let, let me go look at the code too as I'm, as I'm doing it and then we'll get to the output side. So the two inputs are the encoder count, I'm, I call that E count and button, okay? So, so and I have a variable called T count for the total number of counts. So I'm, the total number of counts at each sampling instant, I, I add it to encoder count so that keeps on accumulating. But if, and this encoder has 10 slots. So in one revolution, it has 10 slots and this can read only up to nine. So when it goes above 100, I want to reset it. That's why, so if that goes over, if it becomes 100, or if I press the button, I want to reset the total count to zero. And 10, 10 uh, counts is one revolution. So if I divide total count by 10, I get the number of revolutions. So this counter, counts how many revolutions the encoder uh, encoder makes. Now that, now I cannot take that and directly give it to the seven segment uh, display. I, I give it to this decoder chip. Now what the decoder chip does is it takes that and converts it into binary. So the core thing that is going on there, so if you look at what I've done there is, this is the So it takes so it takes each each this, uh, each integer and converts it into uh, uh, a, a, the binary form. But this is the least significant bit. So to see it clearly, I just had to put uh, yeah, reverse. But over here, I'm connecting the least significant bit to pin to the first pin. So that's but but you get the idea. So each integer value is, connect, is converted to its decimal form. And so that's what this two BCD block is doing. And so when I connect these two, the pulse input and the, and the button input to both the counter and to this two BCD block, I put that together using systems connections model. I get a block that takes these two inputs and returns four inputs, either zeros or ones, uh, based, on, based on the uh, number of uh, counts. So the two inputs, are connected to pins two and three. If you look here, so pin two is what I connected to the encoder and pin three is what I connected to the button. So those are my two inputs and this time I wanted to count the number of rising edges. And then the outputs are the four digital pins that are connected to the decoder. So from the decoder's data sheet, if, if these values are sent to the decoder, it will, it will correctly uh, trigger the inputs of the seven segment display and display the correct value. So if we just had to make sure that we send the right binary coded values uh, to to this uh, to this decoder chip. And once I have the 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 tar the inputs and outputs, I can I can I I can put together the microcontroller specification and then deploy the code. So over here I have the uh, the encoder connected to this shaft here, and I have a button. So let me, it's hard to see that zero, but after one revolution, it goes up to one, and it keeps on counting like that. And then it overflows back to zero. 
keep on counting. Somewhere I press the button and it should reset it to zero. Okay, so, so this is the example of uh, a digital input and output. And, and we, we saw two kinds of uh, digital inputs. One is a simple button input and one, uh, and one is an encoder where you, where you can handle pulses. So the next one, is, is analog input and output. So I have an RGB LED here, and I have three potentiometers. They give, and then the microcontroller reads the, the analog signals, the value of these potentiometers, and then adjust the brightness of the LEDs on, on, the, on the RGB LED. So what, what, what is the core computation I want the microcontroller to do? It has three inputs, and all the three inputs are just uh, map to the output, so it's just an identity matrix essentially. And the inputs are the three uh, pins to which I've connected the potentiometers A0 to A8, A2, and then the outputs are pins 9, 10, and 11. So yeah, for this we have to look in the data sheet because not every pin on a microcontroller will support PWM. So only those pins we can use for output. And then I have the complete microcontroller specification and with the port to which the microcontroller is connected and then I embed the code. So you see, I adjust the, the potentiometer connected to the pin that was mapped to the red one. If that one goes up, the green, the blue, and, yeah, and then I, I, if I concurrently turn two on, it shows up and so on. Yeah, and, and this, this one here is what I, what I just did initially. Yeah, I had this configuration where it's where I was using an USB ASB, USB ASP programmer to program it, but you can also use an Arduino Uno. There's a way to program it using the Arduino Uno. So let's, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm just going over the basic examples. The other thing you will notice is, you see, we support a wide variety of microcontrollers. So if here I've used a, a microcontroller from Pololu. The next one is an Arduino Yun, and the other one is an Arduino Micro. Okay, so 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 an, another thing is I'd like to point out is it's it's not just the Wolfram language code. So because this is like the maker community, there are a lot of libraries that are out there. So if you want to add, if you want to, if you have a device, some sensor, and you want to use the library that is associated with that device. You can do you, you do that using the microcontroller kit. So here, I have a, a distance sensor, and and th there is a library for that on GitHub which I downloaded. And then there is this LCD display for which also there is a library. So what I'm going to do is use the library to get the distance values, and use the second library to display it onto that LCD. So again, the system what I want the uh, core computation is, is very trivial, just the input goes to output, so it's just unity. And when you have an external library, this is how you specify it. It's not really in terms of the pins. We start off by saying that the type is external library. What are the files that need to be included? So how you have to create this object, this, this object, and these are the pins to which that is connected. That those that green and blue that you see going are connected to pins uh, 12 and 11, that's the trigger and the echo pins, I believe, to for this sensor, to the, for this ultrasonic sensor to send and know how far the object is. And then in the loop, so once it sets it up in the loop, this is the function, the, this is the method, the ranging function, and it will return the distance in centimeters. Okay, so this loop is what it's going to be running in a loop uh, at each sampling instant. Now for the output, again, I do the same thing. I say it's of type external library. I, I specify the files to inc the file to include. I create the object. And when it's an output channel, the output to be uh, sent is going to be assigned to this, to this first uh, value in this list. Then it clears the LCD and prints it and it just happens it with the unit centimeters. So once I have the input and output and the microcontroller that I've connected it to, I give the microcontroller specification. Over here, I also have to now say where the libraries are on your files in your file system so, so that you can find that and compile it properly.
So typically you install in the Arduino libraries folder. That's how the Arduino IDE, if you want to use these libraries from the Arduino IDE, that's, that's where it's uh, uh, installed. And then we deploy the code, microcontroller input code, the system, the microcontroller, the port to which it's connected and it give the optional library specification. See, I moved far, even further, close and so on. Okay. So I think what I'll do next is just give a quick overview of what are the support, uh, what are the scope of the project. So, so, so we support the systems model. So you, you may think they are restricted, but these are the uh, these are very ideal for describing what computations the microcontroller needs to do, and it can be used to describe filters, controllers, um, from for modeling, even for data as you see, even for data acquisition. You can, you can create a model and, and, and describe it in terms of these models and then deploy it in terms of the, uh, deploy it to the microcontroller. So these are the ones, the transfer function, state space model, uh, affine state space model, nonlinear state space model. And this one is, is useful. You'll see it in an application example. So if you do a systems connections model, it will create each one of these as a separate function. So it will not reduce it. Okay, so sometimes you cannot reduce, there'll be a little involved blocks, you cannot reduce it. You can use a systems connections model to to describe your system and then deploy it. Now, what are the the, the targets we support? We support several things and, and to find that, that we have three entity types, the microcontroller target, microcontroller vendor, and microcontroller family. So the microcontroller, so, so this is the, this is the course of the, these are the families we support. So any any target that has one of these microcontrollers that uses one of these microcontrollers, the microcontroller kit can deploy code to, and the subset of and the and the list of vendors that that we have tested and it looks like it works are are, are these and you can find whether anyone is there using that and if you want to get the actual microcontroller name, you can use this entity type microcontroller target. Yeah, and, and yeah, and then, and then you can do entity class, you can query whether it belongs to this vendor and this family and, and so on. Yeah, and yes, and this is something I'd mentioned earlier too. So from the microcontroller code data object, you can get additional properties. So if you want to know what was the source code that was generated, you can ask for okay. I don't have it. I can copy that. So you can see what was the source what was the source code that was used. You can probably copy this to, to the Arduino ID and it'll work from there too. But if if over here don't know whether this will, okay, let me try for a bare metal. If I do, Oh, I'm sorry, I just disconnected that one. So let me bring that up. Yeah, I had this disconnected, so. Let me see if this works. Yeah, so I can take this, if I, now this is, I should not have deleted the previous one, but this one is going to be, you know, it's, it's very hard to see with this, but probably with this one, you can make the difference out. So let me copy this guy. So we hear the, if I do that, Okay, over here, if you see, I, I have the output as serial. So all the code that was generated 
was from the Russian language, you, you see that it's very custom serial code to, to do that. But now if I do the same thing, this one, and I think I've just changed that to wiring. Yeah, so I'll just do it here. We call it M1. Now if I you see if I say the language is wiring then it's going to use uh, the uh, what 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 the, the code that is typically used in a sketch so you can copy either of this into an Arduino ID and and go from there okay yeah. and yeah and, and the next thing I wanted to mention is we have a lot of documentation support if you just want to quickly see what we have, I think this page, the, this marketing page is where we put together all these examples. If you want to go into a little more depth, there is the ref page for microcontroller embed code. So each one of these features, it goes over in 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 greater a little more greater depth, depth and and then. If you want to go into even more greater details, there are there are tutorials for each one of them. It will tell you how you can specify how, what is the internal workings of how to specify the uh, external library and so on. And then finally, we have some application examples here which show you how we ourselves use the microcontroller kit, and hopefully they will inspire you to create your own projects. Okay. So okay, so in the final thing, let's let's look at some some application examples. Okay, so what what I have here is I'm just deploying all the all the IR filters in in the Wolfram language to a microcontroller. So I, I I get the list of all the IR filters, and then I create a third order of each one. I create a third order with a cutoff frequency of two hertz. And before I deploy them, I have to discretize them because the microcontroller is a discrete device. We cannot just deploy the continuous uh, time models there. And then I put them together using connections, uh, systems connections model. So it has one input. So the input I'm going to send from, from the Wolfram language, I'm going to send a noisy signal. And the output of each uh, filter are the, is the output. So we have six filters and so six outputs in total. And then we specify what microcontroller I'm using. The input is serial, and I have six serial outputs. And then I deploy this onto the microcontroller. At this point, you can use any serial tool to go back and forth with the microcontroller, but it's very um, convenient to use the Wolfram language because you get all the visualization uh, with it. Yeah, the one thing I checked was, so if I put these six IR second, third order filters, how much memory does it take so it takes about eight kilobytes and it's i mean it, it's no problem for the microcontroller this one has about 32 kilobytes if i'm not mistaken so so i i create a noisy input signal and beyond this is not the microcontroller kit beyond this is all the device framework in in, in the wolfram language i open a connection to so now wolfram language sees that not like it, it sees that as a, as a serial device I open a connection to that device, and then I run a schedule task. I should. Okay, what I'm doing in that schedule task is the following. Is that there? Yeah. yeah. So if there is, if the device is ready, I'm going to append to this output. I'm just going to read. And, and the bytes are coming with an end byte. So I, I read till that, and I, then I clean the, the buffer. Uh, yeah, because I'm keeping track of what time instant it's coming, I, I, I keep track of that in this uh, T variable. And then I write, and then I start by writing a start byte. I, re, I, write, I write the new value of U that needs to be sent. Okay, send so the new value of U that needs to be sent. I keep doing this. Uh, Okay, and I keep doing this each sampling period. Okay, each sampling period. 
And so if I do that after running it for some time, this is the this is the real time response that we get from the filter. Okay, so, so, so yeah, some filters have a face lag, some have a face lead, and and you can see the noisy signal and how each uh, filter has uh, has uh, has uh, affected that that noisy signal. Okay, so yeah, so th this one this 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 example is. Is for hardware in the loop simulation. So, so for for as in this case, it's a quarter car model, uh, suspension model. I I don't I don't have access to a quarter car suspension model. So, if I want to see its uh, real time behavior, or if I want to do some uh, controller design for a vibration problem, I can create a model of that and deploy it to the microcontroller. And so, I can test my controllers with this real time system. So, I. Yeah, so so let me okay, let me then. So this, it's a microcontroller, but because it's now running a suspension model, it it's for our purposes, it 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 is a virtual suspension system, and the road input I'm giving it using this joystick. Okay, so so this Y R input I'm giving it through this joystick, and then the outputs are the the. the the displacement of the unsprung mass and the sprung mass, which I will get out through serial. So I create the model along with its values, and I have to discretize it as before before I deploy it, and then uh, I have to I have to make sure that these values coming from these uh, from this joystick are translated into something uh, something that's useful for the model. So. It it gives a value from zero to four point eight, and so I I scale it to go from from minus one to one. So what what this does is yeah. So if I see so it takes that put uh, that joystick value and it translates it so the input to that uh, suspension system running on the microcontroller is a displacement from minus one to one unit okay and so then i put together the connections model it, you you see it's the same paradigm that we do in each example we put together the the systems model we do the microcontroller specification we identify the port and then we deploy it so once i have the this uh, the systems model. I go to the microcontroller specification. Say this is the microcontroller. The joystick input is an analog input on A3, and the outputs are the serial inputs. I, I the two. So what I'm outputting is all three. I, I output the and then just like before, I create this uh, schedule task where I can read it. And this is just a, a, a time capture of what the response was like. And then in in the Wolfram language, you can also create this dynamic graphic and see it in, in real time. So that's an upward motion of the wheel at the bottom, and you can see how the how the system is uh, responding. So okay, so these examples are like so. We now we had a, a signal processing example. This is a hardware in the loop simulation example. Now I'm going to do an open loop control and finally a, a closed loop uh, control example. So for the open loop, I, I took a stepper motor. So this is the stepper motor. It needs a driver because I mean, it's, yeah, all these motors they we usually do it with drivers because they draw a lot of current and. And, and and the way they work is we have to send uh, a high or low signal to the four coils on this on this uh, on this motor. So we send that signal to this driver, and the driver then sends it to the motor. And it's recommended to use an external power supply for the motors, and so so it, so it can so it has the necessary power to to drive it. So the input is again from a joystick. So that joystick input comes into this microcontroller and then the microcontroller sends out the output using so this has uh, four coils and so 0 1 2 and 3 so this is an adafruit trinket and yeah it's 
very nifty. I've used up literally all the pins on that microcontroller. So, so the motor itself has um, 50, 512 steps to complete one revolution. And so th this is like a design choice. How, how much resolution do I want? How sensitive do I want the motor to be to, to the joystick input? And there's several ways to divide it. So I choose this one here where I have eight steps per division. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Where I have eight steps per division. And so with in 64 divisions, I will, in 64 steps, I can complete one revolution. So if the joystick goes about three volts, it's going to move uh, eight steps. And if it goes below one volt, because in the middle is somewhere like 2.5. So I, I choose three and one on either side. If it goes below one, then it goes uh, back negative eight steps. And I create the systems model for that. The joystick input is the is the analog input. It comes in on pin four here. I think we can, it's coming on pin four. It's really hard to see that pin four. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, and and this is the input channel that that was fine. And now for the output, I mean, I'm going again going to use the library. So I had to specify what was the what's the header file I'm using. And this is the, so these are the pins zero, one, two, and three that I'm connecting to in zero, in one, in two, and in three on the, on the driver. And the, in the loop, the value from the potentiometer gets assigned here and it says it rotates that much value. So that gives the uh, output uh, channel specification. Then I have the complete microcontroller specification. And this is the programmer that's used by the Adafruit Trinket. Uh, again, I have to specify what is the li where the library is located, and I I can then deploy it onto this microcontroller. Yeah. So you can change how how responsive it is by tweaking those different uh, parameters. So this is open loop control. So if you want to position it somewhere, you manually have to uh, adjust the joystick. So the next one is closed loop control. I have a DC motor. So the first thing I do is, uh, yeah, so don't have, yeah, let me go like this. So I have a mod, um, the model of the motor. And from that, I do a controller design, discretize it. And where do I have? yeah, so this is the motor. So So how do we know the speed of the motor? So the motor has a built-in encoder. So this is that signal coming in, okay? And I'm going to use the rising edge counts to actually count the number of inputs. So that is counting the encoder inputs, okay? So that is counting the encoder inputs. And the motor has a gear ratio of 9.86 with 12 revolutions, uh, 12 12 counts, so the, so, the, so the encoder shaft has 12 counts per revolution, and the gearbox ratio is 9.86. So this is the total number of uh, counts in the encoder shaft. And then I'm, I, so I want to convert that to, to ro uh, rotations per minute, and that's why I multiply it by 60. And so this, when, when multiplied by the number of counts, is going to give me the speed of the motor in RPM. And this is the same thing I did with that joystick earlier. The potentiometer value is from 0 to 5. I want to rescale it to read from 0 to 500. And then this is the com uh, comparator block. And I have uh, this, uh, this block here, which is the, the inverse motor shield block, which, is a, which again, I need the shield because the motor draws uh, too much current. And what I'm giving to the sh to the microcontroller is basically the the duty cycle, but the controller is specified in terms of volts. So so if I want so many volts, this one computes what the duty cycle is and sends the duty cycle to the pin. So I put together this block. So this is the potentiometer sc uh, scalar, which gets the input from the potentiometer. It it sends it to this comparator, which compares the encoder value. So now over here, both the units are RPM. It sends it to the controller. The controller output is a voltage. 
when this inverse shield actually computes the 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 duty cycle that I need to send to to the to the microcontroller. So I put together that. I say what are the inputs the 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 actual uh, reference speed that I've set at the input is computed uh, is attached to pin A5 and as I showed before so this reference speed is connected to pin A5 and this encoder reading is connected to pin A2 pin 2 sorry and then for the output for the output channels again yeah, this you can see by looking at the motor shield. So this is pin 11, it's of type analog. And then I send the reference. I, I actually put two taps here. The What is the reference and the actual speed? So I can actually see us uh, get them back in the Wolfram language and see it. So now once I do this, the controller is deployed to the motor and it can be run and it will do the, the speed control. So as before, again, I do the same thing with the device framework. I open a connection to the device. I create a schedule task to read the values. And as I'm running the motor and increasing the speed, giving it disturbance, I can, I can see what the response is. So this is a video of that. See, I increase the speed. Can increase the speed. Now I'm going to give it a disturbance. And you know the controller fights back with that disturbance and and tries to maintain the motor speed at that at that same level. When I take the disturbance off, there's a slight blip and I bring it on, there is so that that it, what I'm doing now is just a metric of disturbance rejection. Probably now I turn it off. Okay, so okay, so to to summarize the, the the microcontroller kit, it automates the generation and deployment of uh, code to microcontrollers. It supports several target boards and microcontrollers. It enables a model-based design workflow where you go from requirements through the modeling, through the controller design to deployment, and then you have to verify this. So, so this is a key component in that model-based design workflow. It generates real-time code, although I didn't get much time to describe that. But if you go to the tutorial page, you'll see. So it makes sure that, so this is important for controllers and filters and so on. So you got to make sure that the sampling rate is right. So at each sampling instant, it's getting a new value and updating the controller. Because if you take too much, if there is too much delay, the controller will not be, or the filter will not perform as expected. Yeah, and then there are hooks. So this one I didn't cover, but but you can go to the tutorial pages, and if you if you if you see that you need more information, you can come here. And although there are, it it automatically computes a lot of things. You you can change things like, I think this is a. You can change this is a. You can change the timer parameters and so on. So if you want to really have fine control, that that is also available. Yeah, we, we already saw that how you can integrate external uh, libraries. You, you can see the source code and other properties and it and it reduces the overall project development time. So I hope you found this talk useful and I wish you all the fun and success with your projects as well. Yeah, if there are any questions, send them to, uh, to support at uh, wolfram.com. And thank you very much for your time.